And now it's time for the ridiculous. <laughs> what kinds of things make people pissed? And how many suitors exactly has she dismissed? Siri, what are some locations for a lover's tryst? Uh, oh, darling, surely there must be a list. A list? A list? A list? A list? You're telling me it's all here on this bleeding <laughs> list. It's preposterous and ludicrous. Well, actually, it's all quite ridiculous. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. Welcome to The Ridiculous. I'm Sally Brooks. And I'm Jen O'Neill, and we're back with more fun lists for you this week. Hello, Jen. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. How are you? I'm great. Well, listen, I just had a child-free weekend, so I, know. I am great. <laughs> I am awesome. rested. I have uh, been out to eat two nights in a row. I've had only delicious food, and... Um, you know, I just I can't say good good enough things about it. Our friends Matt and Katrina took Max for the whole weekend. That's wild. It's wild, I, right? Of. Like when you like angels, they just were angels. like, "Hey, would Max want to spend the night at our house two nights on a weekend?" We were like, Is, "Are you punking us? <laughs> like, are, you try, are you trying to get our hopes up for something?" <laughs> they were like, "No, no, no." It's what uh, their son wanted for his birthday, and. <gasps> Jen, that's, it was glorious. I mean, that is, I'm so glad that this happened for you. And it yeah. does sound glorious and amazing. And they're such angels for doing that. If one of my kids was like, I want for my birthday two days worth of sleepovers, I would be like, how about a pony? Do, do you want a car instead? <laughs> Let's go to Disneyland. Like I, I don't know that I can handle that. <laughs> I two know because wow. we do like Max has lots of we do lots of sleepovers with uh, like you know their kids and and um, like Max is like best buddies. We'll have sleepovers a lot, but it's one night, and by the next day, I'm like goodbye. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> goodbye. And it's not even that the kids are like <laughs> bad or even that much. Is just like at some point, I'm like I need. It's need- a 24 hour nonstop job. And then yeah. if you do it two days in a row, that's like 48 hours nonstop working because you can ignore your, your own children just fine. You know, <laughs> right. you don't, but it's like, but if a, someone else's child is thirsty or needs a snack or like can't, doesn't know where the bathroom is or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you were on, you were, you were on call nonstop. Yes. So, yeah. So, yeah, angels and, angels. Uh, you know, we're like, how big of a bottle of wine do we need to get them? <laughs> <laughs> like, do they have those huge magnums? Like, can we they get – They do. <laughs> can we get one of those? <laughs> uh, that seems appropriate. But um, so, yeah, how was your weekend? You it was shows good. And- yeah, I just had shows um, and um, my kids were with their dad, so I had a kid-free weekend and it was great. That's lovely. Yeah. So mm-hmm. lovely. Um, I mean, another another like check mark in the column of divorce. <laughs> yeah, I know. There are some upsides, that's for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, okay. So we did have a, a little bit of an announcement. Um, I don't know. You know, we live in Georgia. Um, I think a lot of our listeners do as well. And so you know that even though it is still – Mid May, this is our kids' last week of school. Yeah, <laughs> which is wild. It mm-hmm. is wild. Summer is here, um, and with that, uh, it means we're going to take a little break because it's summer break. We are, you know, our kids are going to be home. We want to spend some time with them, and we got lots of stuff to do. So, yeah, um, work doesn't stop for us. <laughs> like you know, we still have to do our other jobs and be home with the kids. Yeah, and then there's you know. Just lots of stuff to do. There's so much stuff. So much stuff. So um, so if you don't see us, you're not going to see us in your feeds for four to six weeks. We haven't quite decided. We'll let you know when we're ready to come back. But, um, but yeah, so we're not gone. We're just taking a summer break. A hiatus, if a you hiatus will. A hiatus, if you – and I will. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I will. Um, and I hope whatever you guys are doing over the summer that you – are also taking a break that you don't you don't have time for podcasts because you're having too much fun. Yeah. Maybe with your family, maybe on your own. Maybe you're, you're hiking. 
Maybe you're at a lake. Maybe, Maybe you're at a you're, beach. Yeah. Maybe you're inside your office and you're mad at us, but can't help that. <laughs> Floating on a float in the pool. You yeah. can't listen to podcasts when you float. I mean, you can, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't. That's Enjoy like- the pool. <laughs> Enjoy your life. Uh, get out of here. Get out in the world. Um, but we do have an episode today, so let's get to our list. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going first this week. I guess in the spirit of, you know, tomorrow's Louise's uh, fifth grade graduation. <gasps> After tomorrow, I will no longer have any elementary school children. And it's really sad. It's so sad. I didn't realize how sad I would be. It's like, it's, yeah. Like, I'm, I now, I like, now that I'm a mom, I totally get like, I never understood why I, I would see like, you know, people saying, sending their kids off to college and the parents being like a wreck. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, cool, your kid's going to college. But right. now that I'm a mom, I'm like, oh, die. <laughs> I'm like, uh, you know, I'll, I'm, I'm not like parent that will be crying during the whole thing. Yeah. But I know. I mean, it's as sad. much as we're like joking about how nice it is to have a kid free weekend, also, I was like, Ben, go pick up Max now. I'm ready for him to go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like the real yin and yang of like, we want them to like grow up and do all the, you know, become fully human formed humans and yeah. then when they do it's like no no I know <laughs> I'm not ready I know oh. my niece who listens to the podcast Sophia and she Sophia. says that she recommends even just Sophia going to college which is in the town I live in <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was still like like the other day when she was like I really want to come to one of your shows soon and I was like you want to hang out with me? Yes. And so, uh, yeah, I was just like, you know, it's so hard watching them grow up and go off to college, even though she's literally five minutes from me. Right. It's still just like, <laughs> Things um, keep changing and I don't like it. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, but I uh, – so I this um, listicle that I found is from BuzzFeed.com by um, Jeremy Hayes. And uh, this is just like to thank teachers for a wonderful year. For me, this I, like that's yeah. why I'm doing this about teachers. But uh, this one is called um, Teachers Reveal Jaw-Dropping Moments from Parent-Teacher Night That They Still Think About. Oh, gosh. This is great. I can't wait. I'm so, this I haven't is so read great. It. Yeah. I'm just so excited because like <laughs> I can only imagine – yeah. I can only imagine what teachers deal with. Oh, um, man. Max had like just the best teacher this year who you know, who is Louise's fr- best friend's mom, right? Oh, Miss Thompson? Miss Thompson. Yeah, she's the best. <laughs> yeah, Max loved her so much. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. How can you not? I mean, all of the teachers at our kids' school are amazing, but yeah. Um, so this one says um, it was my first year teaching at 23. And the father of a seventh grade student got to my table, looked me up and down, and he said, oh, now I know why you're, insert student's name's favorite teacher. (sighs) She said, I didn't call him out like I would now and continued with the conference like normal. At the end, he gave me his number and told me to call him anytime and winked at me. I reported it to my admin. So inappropriate. His kid was such a sweetheart, though. Oh. Not for long. He's probably learning bad tricks right. from his dad. But like, oh, uh, that's so un- that's so inappropriate and so uncomfortable. Well, and it's just like no regard for your child, right? Like this is yeah. your child's teacher. Like we don't bring our like dirty sex lives into our kids' classrooms, okay? Like that's just like a no. That's a no. Yeah. I mean, I do. No, I'm kidding. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I did. I, this was. I. This person was just a guy that I went on a date with one time. Yeah. Nothing happened. Just dinner. Uh, then that was it. But I. I had. Um, at the beginning of the school year, I was volunteering for like the. Um, the uh, like welcome day or whatever, where everybody goes in and <laughs> I think I signs up. This. <laughs> oh yeah, you did take a picture of it. You took a picture of me, the exact of uh, working, like do, selling yeah. t-shirts, and at the exact moment where I looked up and I was like, oh hey. <laughs> 
that I went out on a date with and we never spoke again. We literally <laughs> never spoke again. And then I was like, so uh, small or medium? <laughs> You're just sure. <laughs> just like, oh, man. But in the, and I was like, I because I, I tried to, I was like, I will never date anybody at my kid's school, any parents, yeah. anybody in this circle. And then I, it was an accident. I didn't yeah. know this kid went to Fernbank, but it was just one date. And, and yeah, like yeah, I yeah. said, it was just dinner and <laughs> goodbye. But that was interesting. Dinner, dinner and never see you again. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Okay, bye. Uh, <laughs> except for first day of school. Yay. Also, that <laughs> is the guy. That's the guy that I think knows the night clipper. No. Yeah, that's, that's that the guy. guy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's an accomplice. <laughs> He's the accomplice. Good thing <laughs> Louise is graduating tomorrow in case he's listening. And he's like, God damn it, I don't know the night clipper. Stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this one says, um, oh, oh my God, this is hilarious. Even though, I, like I said, nothing happened with this guy. This one says, the parent was a one night stand from 10 years earlier. Oh, no. Eesh, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, number three, about 20 years ago, the student's counselor and I did a home visit. During the visit, their pet rat crawled up the mom's arm, crawled down the front of her shirt, and settled down there. This happened while the dad cleaned his gun. I was so happy to get out of there. Oh, Woof. my God. <laughs> yeah, no, th- no thank you. I would not want to go that into household homes. Yeah. Um, this one says... Um, Well, my ex showed up for a child around the age of the time we dated. I dumped him because he did not have time for me and seemed like he was not interested in the relationship, even if he said he tried. I was the side chick. He had a baby mama the whole time. She dumped him too, long term, but still had 50% custody of the baby. Thankfully, I don't have time to see him as I am the general teacher aide. I'm kind of confused by that entire it sounds like Blurb. this is what I'm. This is what I. This is what the scenario I came to okay. after was that this was a teacher. All of a sudden, her, the guy she was dating shows up for a kid in her class, and she's like, "Wait, you have a kid?" Uh, and it turns out he, she was the side chick. Oh, that sucks. Or maybe she realized that he had had a kid at the same time they were dating, or something. Maybe. This one says, I'm a science teacher and a parent asked me if she could borrow my replica human skeleton. I said, I I love this woman. I love her, whoever she is. Like, it's an out Thursday. Yeah. I said, no, it's school property. She then tried to barter with me for it. I told her no, and then I needed to prepare for the next group of parents. She got upset and then finally left. As I was headed to my car, I overheard her talking shit about me to other parents, saying I was super rude to her for not letting me borrow my life-size <laughs> human skeleton replica. She even ended up asking the principal, who also said no. I never found out what she wanted it for, though. Weird. Oh my god, that's hilarious. That's People amazing. Crazy. <laughs> um, this one says, <laughs> it's like, what, I can see, what if that person was like a comedian? It was like, for the bit! For the bit! For I the jokes! <laughs> Just on. let me have it for one day. Um, I want to ride, I I ride with it in the car next to me. We're doing the, <laughs> for the HOV lane! <laughs> Um, this one says, I was a high school teacher to a pair of siblings and their father came in for family conferences. The kids were great students and very respectful and kind. I mentioned something about how the father and his wife must have been doing a very good job at raising their children. The father said, well, it's just me now. My wife left us. I got the sense that it was rather recent. The kids were also pretty forthcoming in general and had not said anything about a divorce or change in the family. Later in the conversation, the dad said he would like to take me out to dinner and thank me for all I'd done for his kids, just him and me. I dodged the invitation because it seemed awkward and borderline inappropriate. I texted my teacher group, friend group immediately after he left my room and she said oh my god so this is the tax exchange yeah her oh my god i think mr so-and-so just asked me out and then the art teacher said oh my god he definitely did because he asked me out earlier this evening (gasps) 
Oh, so he's like just trying his luck oh. with every teacher. Oh, that is a sad. That's a dad that can't get out. Yeah. He, like he's he just like doesn't go out at all. So he's right. like, I'm just gonna ask out every woman I see. <laughs> he was like, ah, I think this is the next time I'll see oh. any single woman. God. Okay, Oof. this one says, um, I was teaching at a private Christian school when I had a dad come in to speak to me about his daughter who had made a B in my English class. He was quite upset about it. Uh, oh, he was quite upset be- because as he said, it was my job. He paid my salary to ensure that she made an A. What a fucking asshole. Mm. Fuck that guy. Um, this one says, I remember talking to a student's dad and he looked – as high as a kite. I still remember watching in the parking lot to make sure his wife drove. She did. LOL. Oh, geez. Oh, what a dummy. Like you can't just like not be high at parent teacher meeting. Right. Uh, this one says, um, a dad at one of my, a dad of one of my students waited until I was done with my class information presentation and then promptly asked me on a date for coffee. It was so awkward. I mumbled something about how I was flattered, but that was against the rules and it was the beginning of the year. So every time that kid walked into my class, I couldn't help but think about how his dad asked me out at open house. Like what is, why is this a trend here? Why? I guess like dads just like love teachers, you know, like it, it's like a teacher fantasy. Hot. Guess, I guess. Or maybe they just don't get out. I don't, I know. don't know. It's so inappropriate. Okay. The balls, the balls. Um, Oh my God. This one says, I was teaching fourth grade. A new student who was previously homeschool arrived at the school. I was meeting with the family for the first time. During the meeting, the nine-year-old child asked his mom for some milk. I assumed she would pass him a bottle of milk. Instead, she lifted (laughs) her shirt and breastfed the nine-year-old. I quickly finished the meeting in complete disbelief. Nine is a lot. Nine is a lot in like... I, it just like that poor kid, that poor kid. Like I, nine, I mean, I'm nine is third grade. I have friends that breastfed. I it wasn't a thing for me because like I had problems breastfeeding, yeah. so I barely made it through three months. But um, I uh, but I have friends that did um, that did breastfeed for a long time. Yeah, and and like. No, I mean, and like that's their journey, and no judgment. But in my mind, I was like, if they're old enough to like ask, like, like ask for it, and say, and walk up to you, and say, <laughs> "I'm hungry," like, I think, uh, to me, that's that's the line. But I know that everybody's different. You do, but I mean, nine just seems a little extreme for sure. Nine, nine just seems extreme because of the like social and like emotional aspect for the child. Yeah. Like there's just something I I don't know that feels like mm, yeah. I I mean I, I know it's such a touchy subject and like I I sincerely am like supportive of women who do extended breastfeeding. I'm just like I yeah. could I was so ready to be done and I breastfed for pretty long time like until he was 16 months which felt was way longer than I anti- thought I would so yeah. I understand like why people do it longer because it's like oh it's such a comfort to your child you're feeding them it seems so natural and it's like right it's hard to know when to cut that off but also fucking nine like nine years old and at school yeah and you're I- sending this kid to public school yeah nine-year-olds are aware crazy. man they yeah. can stay home by themselves <laughs> that's crazy that's wild <laughs> This one says, a few years ago, I was working the enrollment forms table. A mom and grandpa come in with the paperwork to enroll a cute, sweet 12-year-old. It wasn't until I looked at the birth certificate that I realized that the grandpa was actually the 71-year-old dad and the mom was his 30-year-old trophy wife. If you do the math like we did, you would have figured out that mom was only 18 when she gave (gasps) birth and dad was 59. Dad is also mega rich and they have two younger children that I have the pleasure of teaching. The mom and dad still creep us all out though. That's seems yeah, predatory. Yeah. Like 18. Yeah. Wow. Ugh. Um, okay. I'm skipping like I'm skipping through every single one is about a dad hitting on the teacher. 
It's like, it's unreal. This one says, uh, one of the first grade teachers I was talking to told me about a meeting at a parent-teacher conference in which the grandmother of one of the students was so upset with the child that she slapped her across the face and forced the child to apologize to the teacher. I don't remember what the child did, but I know that it didn't warrant that reaction from the grandmother. The teacher mentioned this to the principal and it was basically shrugged off. I was totally baffled. Oh, that's awful. I mean, isn't aren't teachers mandatory reporters? Like, don't you have to report if you think there's child abuse, which is like, yeah, somebody slapping someone across the face is in public. Yeah. So you can mm-hmm. only imagine what they're doing behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Give us a funny one. I know. Hold <laughs> on. Okay. There's one left and you could only guess. I was meeting with the parent and they said, you are so fine. I wasn't paying attention to what you were saying about what my daughter did. I felt bad for the mom and daughter. The daughter was 14 in sixth grade with a child and they didn't realize the seriousness of that circumstance. Oh, Oh, that sucks. That's not funny at all. That's not funny at all, Jen. Why am I laughing? I don't know. Because I'm uncomfortable by I the thought truth. this was going to be – I totally thought that this was going to be like a funny list of weird parents. And there was a couple. But this is all just stories of teachers getting hit on by gross dads. Truly. Gross. It's so fucked up. Okay. Sorry, guys. I know this is our last, <laughs> our last <laughs> list for a while, but – Maybe I should start reading them beforehand, but I like to be surprised with you guys. I like to give you guys real-time reactions. All right. I hope you got something better, Sally. Oh, well, we'll see. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Here's a little look behind the scenes, you guys. This is my third try. I have have started two other lists, and they were both duds and not funny and sad. And so we just decided – we cannot be having this. No. <laughs> this is not the day for that. And so Jen came to the rescue, and I now have a list from Thought Catalog um, compiled by January Nelson, and it is 50-plus short, funny stories that will crack you up in 60 seconds. So they better. If these don't. I just Googled those, like, funny stories about <laughs> something <laughs> anything <laughs> what is crazy is that i had also googled fun people share their funniest stories and that's what came up and then it was about like coworkers Murder. being murdered and i was like oh this is this is not what we need today people um, are sick. okay <laughs> here we go let's see are these it says get ready for a hurricane of lol I so, hope. <laughs> i'm not i'm not hopeful but here we go <laughs> <laughs> uh, this first one says, in my junior year of high school, this guy asked me on a date. He rented a red box movie and made pizza. We were watching the movie and the oven beeped so the pizza was done. He looked me dead in the eye and said, this is the worst part. I then watched this boy open the oven and pull out the pizza with his bare hands, <gasps> rack and all, screaming at the top of his lungs, we never had a second date. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, it's so god that poor dumb poor dumb dumb. Poor dumb. <laughs> dumb baby. Oh, poor dumb baby. Okay. Um, okay, I failed the first quarter of a class in middle school, so I made a fake report card. Did you ever do that? Did you ever like um, correct f- your report card or I feel like I mean, I know I actually always got pretty good grades. So I don't think so, but maybe (laughs) in high school, I might have fucked some shit up. High school, I was like really good until I was in high school. Yeah. I I would not put that past me. I definitely know that I used to steal, um, like I would be in in school suspension a lot. And when I was in in school suspension, there was this one teacher that had a whole book full of of those little – like excuse tabs, yeah, like the, yeah. the like three page thing, and um, like excuse absence or whatever. So when he wasn't looking, I stole his book. <laughs> what were you? And then I was like, "You for? get an excuse absence. <laughs> you get an excuse absence." And like kids would come up to me and be like, "Can I get like three sheets of those?" And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like the Robin Hood of in school suspension. I mean, that's um, amazing. Did you get caught? N- no. 
Amazing. Uh-uh. That's amazing. I got caught for skipping <laughs> school. Every time I was in in-school suspension, it was because the um, his name was Officer Pelfrey, and he was like this tiny little rent cop But he was – we used to joke that he was like – because he was so little, he could like hide under cars and stuff. <laughs> but it was just – he would always catch me skipping or leaving school. And so mm-hmm. like that's why I got in-school suspension. And I might have told a teacher one time that he was an ignorant asshole. <laughs> Uh, was he in front of the class? Yeah, because he yeah. was telling everybody. He started a lesson by saying, "Um, he was like he said, uh, talking about how who gets AIDS, and he was like, mm. uh, and he was like, uh, people that live outside the perimeter or or in the perimeter, people that live in the perimeter, people uh, that live in blah, blah, and like and I think he even said something racist. I think he yeah. even said something of like minorities and I was like raise my hand and I was like I can't believe that you're telling a classroom full of you know 17 18 year olds that are about to go out into the real world that they're not going to get AIDS because they live outside the perimeter. Right. I was like are you serious right now? And then and he was and then I got in trouble. <laughs> good good for you that's good trouble but it just it blew and I remember my friend Greg as soon as I raised my hand and started talking I remember him like putting his hand in <laughs> head in his hands and shaking his head like oh here she goes <laughs> like, excuse me he probably was like in like New Yorkers <laughs> like yeah, he said city. something stupid like that. Like <laughs> people with New York accents. Uh, Girls named Jen. Like, yeah. She's going to get AIDS. And I was like, oh my God, you're so stupid. Uh. And so, yeah. So, so I wouldn't, I would like to say probably I changed some grades, <laughs> but I don't really remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this so somebody this person made a fake report card. So I did this every quarter that year. I forgot that they mail home the end of the year cards and my mom <laughs> got it before I could intercept with my fake. She oh, no. was pissed at the school for their error. <laughs> The teacher also <gasps> retired that year and had already thrown out his records. So they had to take my mother's proof, the fake ones that I made throughout the year, and correct the mistake. I oh, never told her the truth. My God, you that's lucky. amazing. That is <laughs> Oh, my <luck>. God. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Um, okay, I went to this girl's party the week after she beat the shit out of my friend. While everyone was getting trashed, I went around putting tuna inside all of the curtain <gasps> rods. So like weeks went by and they couldn't figure out why the house smelled like festering death. They caught me through this video where the guys at the party were singing Beyonce while I was in the background with a ta- can of tuna. <laughs> <gasps> oh my God, that would have been the perfect crime had she not gotten caught. I know like, you should have looked in our era. We could do anything, oh and nobody man. there was no proof, no That's proof because so nobody was recording. Awesome. <laughs> oh God! I remember yeah. when my sister wrote because we used to do shit like that to each other all the time. <laughs> and there was one time where she wrote "fuck you" in pudding on the outside of my door, and it stained, and I got in trouble <laughs> because. It was on. My, I was like, Dad, why would I write "fuck you" on my own door, right? In pudding, and I was like, it was clearly it was Eileen, but I I got in trouble because it was my door, and I was right. like, why why in the, the fuck? <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so good. Um, <laughs> one time, my drama class's teacher had gone home sick, so we were just put in a classroom with a movie to entertain us for a period when an alarm went off. None of us was sure whether it was a fire alarm or the lockdown alarm, so we all head out into the hall to check, and no one's there. So we head back in and climb under our desks, as is lockdown procedure. Cut to an hour later when a teacher bursts in and nearly dies of relief. Because the school was on fire. Oh and my we God. Were the only students not accounted for, and half the faculty and fire department had been searching for us for ages. Literally, the whole school had felt filled with smoke while we kept super safe under our wooden desks. 
Oh my God. That's crazy. The other night, someone, I saw it happen. Like I saw the person back accidentally lean on the fire alarm. Yeah. And the fire alarm went off. It was at my son's band recital thing. So I saw it actually happen. So I knew that it wasn't, uh, but um, it was like the way that the recital was, it was like, it was chorus first and then and then banned. So it yeah. was like I had just gotten there, but the gymnasium was filled with parents and it was chorus and all these people. And not a single person got up from their chairs really? or did anything when the fire alarm was going off for like like for like 20 minutes. Yeah. Nobody did anything about it. They were just like – and teachers were like, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> it's like – <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I, I knew that it was fine, but I don't like it. I don't think anybody else saw what happened. It was right. Just exactly. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and we're just going to roll our dice with these kids and all of an auditorium filled with people. That seems. I know. I mean, at the very least, let's move out because of the liability. That's. Yeah. Um, okay. My whole class once got detention because I drew a penis on a with a glue stick on the whiteboard. And when the teacher went to wipe off the board, all the fluff came off and stuck to the glue. I never got in trouble for it because my whole class found it too funny to tell the teacher it was me. Oh, that's kind of brilliant. Oh my God, that's brilliant. (laughs) And that gives me like so much... uh like faith in humanity that they all stuck together like yes. that. Yeah, like that's amazing. <laughs> Good for all of them. They should all be rewarded. Every yes. last every last one. <laughs> <laughs> um okay. I have a friend who I've known since I was very little. One day when he was six, I was at his house when he got this absolutely god-awful stomach pain. I mean, he was literally writhing in pain. So his mom took him to the doctor's office where the do- doctor took one look and took her, told her to take him to the ER. She feared something along the lines of intestin- intestinal rupture. About halfway to the hospital, my friend suddenly let the loudest, most powerful fart any of us had ever heard. I swear to God, he levitated. We thought the upholstery in the car seat had ripped. After a good 30 seconds of intense farting, he looked at his mom and said, I feel all better now. Oh my God. (laughs) Can you imagine a little (laughs) six-year-old? Man. Oh goodness. Okay. I'll just do a couple more. This is so much better, Jen. (laughs) Good. Really? So much better than uh, murdered coworkers. I tell you what, or like pervy dads, pervy dads. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize these are also like school related. All of them. Huh. This is our our end of the year special, <laughs> our end of the year teacher special. Um, okay, in second grade, I told everyone I was leaving school before the next semester to move to Hollywood to play Megan's cousin from Vermont on Drake and Josh. At first, I told my best friend, but then the whole school found out. I had people coming up to me and asking for my autograph, and even a t- teacher asked to for a picture. When I showed up on the first day of school in third grade, I told everyone that the show was going off the air after the season finished, even though I had no knowledge of when it was ending, so they wouldn't need me. And the show ended after that season and everyone believed me up until like sixth grade, but now my best friend will never let me forget about it. And I'm so angry. (laughs) That was in all caps. So she was in the show? or She She was not. She just told everyone. And then it was like another coincidence that it actually got canceled. Wow. Oh my God. That's so funny. Okay. So in my junior year of high school, I got a project to make a roller coaster for my physics class. Everything was going fine during the until the day my partner and I had to paint the thing. We were in my garage spray painting the tubes and these two guys come marching up to the house across the street and start yelling at the top of their lungs, beating on the door. Now, let me say in defense of the neighborhood I lived in, was in South Dallas and still not a safe place. Well, I called the police, closed the garage, and parked myself in front of the dining room window. Long story short, the police showed up in full gear, broke down the door, and brought the two boys out at gunpoint. And that's the story of how my entire block found out that the abandoned house had new owners. Oh, my God. Can you- <laughs> like your first day at your new house? Oh my and, god. And like a SWAT team pulls up. 
Those poor boys. Those poor boys. Oh, God, that's awful. So I was at a local DMV to get my driver's license when my dad pissed off the lady at the counter. Turns out she was the lady that had to do the actual road test with me. We get in the car, and I thought I was doing pretty well until she starts freaking out. She has me pull over, tells me I'm the worst driver ever. After yelling at me, she demands I go back to the DMV, and the rest of the time she's on her phone. When we get there, there is a state trooper waiting for me who gives gives me a field sobriety test. Literally had to take a sobriety test when I tried to get my license. At least I passed one test that day. You bad like that's how bad of a driver oh, she was that, that they were like, like dr- Oh my god. <laughs> that's so funny. When I um got my license, I remember like usually my mom would take me to do everything, but on this one day for some reason my dad was going to take me to get my license. Yeah. Like, Fuck. And so I, um, he made me so nervous, you know, because yeah. he's just like, you know, stoic, mean Irishman dad. And so <clears throat> I was like, I got in the car and I started to back up and I almost hit the basketball pole. And I, he was like, like, what are you doing? You know, like yelling at me. And I was like, <laughs> and then he was like, and then he's like, no, get in the car because you're going to take the, test for practice. You're going for practice. And I was like, all right, fine. And so like, I didn't even drive to the place. My dad drove there. And then I took the test and I fucking nailed it. Even the parallel parking, (laughs) it was like a miracle. And I come out of there with my license and my dad's like, no, no way. And I was like, sorry, you stayed in Georgia. And he was like, what? And he was like yelling at the DMV for giving me my license. I was like, sorry. (laughs) <laughs> I got my license. And then um, but I do remember that night uh I went out driving with my friends because well, I was of course, like, yeah. yeah. And I was um we were driving and um then there was like this car full of boys and they were like honking and yelling and I was like, Yeah <laughs> you know, like thinking I was like, Hey, you know, like they're like they're just like flirting with us or whatever and we're driving and he keeps honking and they keep and then they they're like pull- telling us to pull the window down. I pulled the window down and he he goes, turn your lights on. (laughs) Okay. Like I didn't, I like didn't even know how to turn the fucking lights on in my car. Yeah. And that's why I'm terrified to let my children drive because I don't trust the state of Georgia when handing out licenses because clearly I should not have had mine. (laughs) You were like, hi. I know. I was like, I thought it was so cool. (laughs) Turn your lights on. Turn your lights on. Uh, (laughs) You're going to kill somebody. Uh (laughs) Uh Yeah. Uh Hey. Uh, That's amazing. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, that's my list. I love it. But you gave me. Thank you. on On a funny note. Yes. Good. Wow. This is a comedy podcast. Right, 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 right. right. Cool. All right, well, let's do our top five. Let's do it. So this was your idea, and I love this idea because it's centered around food. Um, I was like, was it? Wasn't it? Well, I re-submitted your idea back to you today. Oh, well, that's why I this thought it was, was so great. Something, yeah. <laughs> You're like, awesome. That's so I did that, done that to you where I like go back to see what you've suggested and then yeah. I suggest it. And you're like, yeah, it's great. And I'm like, perfect. <laughs> yeah. You suggested this one a while back and I was like, what is Sally like? Okay. This one. Boom. So uh, <laughs> we decided to do, um, we're going to do what top five death row meals. Like what would you want as your last meal? Yeah. Um, so I can start this okay. week. Um, so for me, because I have this stupid gluten allergy, this is why this, this list is so great because sky's the limit. Yep. You know, I'm going to die right after. Right. It's great. It's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Who cares about bloating? <laughs> I can eat whatever the fuck I want. Who cares about um, tummy troubles? <laughs> yeah. Who cares about inflammation? Um, so for me, my number five would be like real New York pizza and like just – if not just a, a simple cheese, slice of cheese, mm-hmm. then it would – well, why not? I'll eat the whole fucking pie. Who yeah. gives a shit? I'm going to die. Yeah. You're- <laughs> um, 
Yes. So that or maybe even like I love pizza with like ricotta cheese on it mm. and like some like eggplant. Like in New York, sometimes they'll do like fried eggplant and ricotta mm-hmm. cheese and yeah, all that stuff. That sounds really – I want that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that sounds and great. And I will eat the whole pie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why would you not? Mm. <laughs> uh, you're going to die. <laughs> you're going to die, die anyway. <laughs> Uh, Okay, so my number five is a perfectly crispy on the outside, soft on the inside Belgian waffle. Okay, with butter and syrup in every hole. Okay, yeah, you got to put perfectly cooked. Yeah, it's got to be in every hole. It's got to fill every hole. That's a good one. That's why I want. I didn't even think to put waffles on here or any. I think maybe it was just like what I was craving. When I made mm-hmm. this list. <laughs> and again, I also am <clears throat> not eating gluten these days. So, yeah. You know. My whole list is gluten. <laughs> uh, um, my <laughs> next one would be um, like real, like from French, like in France. I'm in France and I'm okay. eating fresh baguettes, croissants, brie. Ooh. Like, yeah. All the breads and cheeses. In France. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went to um, Paris with our friends, um, Steve and Carlene. This was years ago before any of us had kids. Before any of us had kids? Before any of us had kids. Um, And we stayed in this like adorable little apartment. Well, it was a very tiny – it was like one bedroom apartment. It was like Uh – but we stayed in this apartment where you could like see um, the Eiffel Tower like from the window. It was like so charming. And at the bottom of the like building was a bakery, like a French bakery. (sighs) And so we would go every morning and we would get pastries. And then in the afternoons, we would get baguettes and brie and like a a roast chicken and like just – drink wine and eat. It was like we felt so That's Parisian. It was so yeah. amazing. Yeah. <sighs> so good. Um, okay. That's a good, that was a really good one. My number four is, uh, speaking of gluten, is a perfect bowl of pasta. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm specifically, when I was thinking about pasta, I had this one meal in New York with my mom that was, we both were like, this is the best thing I've ever put in my mouth. And it was like a tagliatelle, like fresh handmade pasta with um, a short rib ragu mm-hmm. on top and then burrata. Oh, yeah. And so you like open the burrata and it all like made it like creamy and delicious. And then the short rib ragu was kind of like like a red wine, you know, kind of like yeah. so it was like acidic and oh, so I good. make a really good – Short rib ragu, just saying. You do? Yeah. Would you make it for me? <laughs> yes, please, because the recipe is huge and it makes it for like an insane amount of people. And so I never yeah. really make it unless I'm like cooking for someone. And like the last time I made it for like, uh, you know, I cooked it for Jim and like we – um, and then I had like a week's worth of leftovers. <laughs> right. Because really, it makes what do I, so, do I don't know how to cook in small <laughs> batches. Yeah. Same, so. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> um, but uh, this, uh, I, it's funny. Now I'm going to change my, I'm now I'm like, no, I want that meal. I was going to say steak and red wine. But yeah. Now I'm like, no, that, I want that. So that's my number three. I want that exact meal. I want the pasta with ragu and the burrata on top for yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All yeah. right. And then like a little <laughs> sea salt on top of the burrata. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the pasta and some olive oil. I don't know. It was delicious. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So my number three is we're still in New York. It's a uh, a New York bagel. Oh, yeah. Sandwich. Like I want like a fresh bagel I want a bagel. <laughs> I want a bagel. Oh, I want a good want bagel too. so bad. I miss a good bagel. And I actually would – I would like is both a – since this is our death row meal, I'm going to have a bagel, um, like egg, egg sausage cheese bagel sandwich. Mm. And then I also would like a bagel, like a sesame bagel with um, – like a scallion cream cheese, which I really love. Yeah. That's what I would like. Mm -hmm. You know what I used to eat um, back when I ate gluten and people thought it was weird, but I'm telling you it's delicious? Sausage, egg, and cheese on a cinnamon raisin bagel. 
Uh, yeah, you've told me this before, and I do oh, not. Oh, that's right. We <laughs> I have talked not... about this. <laughs> I not... like the sweet and salty. <laughs> I, I like just it. don't like I don't like um, raisins. So I think I. Oh cool. right, okay. And for that reason, I am out. <laughs> You're out. <laughs> but it's a no for me, dog. That's a no for me. There okay. was this place in Cincinnati that did like all they did sandwiches, and it but it was all on um, donuts. Like, which was oh, very, okay. and they were, they were delicious. They were delicious. Huh. So it'd be like grilled cheese on like a donut. That sounds so it's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, my number two, I don't even know if this place still exists anymore. Um, but it was, and this is going to sound disgusting, uh, but I used to live for sesame chicken from Manchu Walk. Which is mm. the um, like at the mall, like the town yeah. center food court, <laughs> um, <clears throat> and um, Chinese food place. But it was just like that real, like thick, like fried, sweet, yeah. salty sesame chicken with the rice. Like I used to eat that all the time when I was a teenager, and um, but and then I stopped eating it obviously when I like, you know, had a brain. And right. I was like, <laughs> this is. <laughs> Not good for you, but if it's a last row meal, I will definitely eat it. I would I don't even know. I'm gonna Google is this Manchu walk. Is it still a thing? <laughs> That's what you, is this still a thing? It there is manchuwalk.com. Oh wait, under menu, no information is available for this thing. <laughs> no, damn it. Well, I'm gonna need somebody that knows the recipe to yeah. make it for me. Oh no, no. It is. It's. It exists. Still okay. at the mall? Restaurant locator. Let's see. Finding my location. <laughs> let's see. Let's get you to it. Let's get you to a Manchu walk. <laughs> yeah. Let's get me to a death row first, and then I can get to. <laughs> I mean, I can arrange that. Oh, uh, okay. no. They're all in Washington. Oh. oh there's, some in, there's one in Birmingham, Alabama. Okay. All right. Well, if you listen, hey, if you get on death row and you will, um, <laughs> I will make the trip to Birmingham for you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll sneak it in with a, you know, a file. I think there's one in Texas, too. All right. <laughs> now I know. Um, okay. Dare my I name- look at the nutritional No, content? Jen, don't. No. <laughs> My answer is always no. <laughs> okay, I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't ruin this it, fantasy yeah. list for us. Okay. <laughs> Don't bring reality into this. Uh, all right. Um, okay. So my number two is a big old steak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a perfect, like a big, probably like a T-bone, maybe. I don't know. Big steak um, with perfect mashed potatoes and dinner rolls. Like, oh, yeah, good, really good dinner roll. Yum. Yeah. Um, my and a glass of red wine. <laughs> yes, there must be wine. And there must be wine. Um, but uh, and my number one death row meal is well, it's a toss up, but it has to be either my mom's or my grandmother's, which that's not possible anymore. So it'll have to be my mom's, but um, eggplant or chicken parmesan. I put right. Parmesan or chicken Parmesan. That's my favorite meal. And um, yeah, with a side of pasta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got to yeah. come with pasta, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I love chicken Parmesan. Oh. Yeah. That's... There's a place in New York called Ruby Rosa, NYC. Uh, have you been there? Uh-uh. Um, I think it's called Ruby, Ruby Rosa. Yeah, Ruby Rosa. It's, it's in um, the uh, – like on Mulberry Street in New York. And they yeah. have – they do all – like they do regular, but they also – everything that they have regular, they have a gluten-free version of it. Of it. And oh, so wow. you can get gluten-free chicken parmesan with a side of gluten-free pasta and yeah. wine, of course. And it's yeah. amazing. It's <laughs> also gluten-free. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's – I do – I have not had chicken parmesan in so long. And that now it sounds really great. Yeah. Um, okay. My number one, and I feel like we're like very aligned on this last, like we could have our, we could, if we both 
did something and we both went to death. We could, we could share a, a meal, a death row I meal mean, because yeah. my number um, one is pizza. Um, and okay. specifically this pizza, it's Adriatico's. It's a place in Cincinnati and they make these pizza. They have pepperonis that are like this big. Oh, yeah. Like as big as your head. And they're just like – it's like a New York style pizza. It's, I mean, it's not exactly New York pizza because it's in Cincinnati. But it's like like that style of pizza and just a whole thing. Yeah, I want the whole thing. I want to eat oh. the whole thing. Yeah, you got to. And then I'll die happy. <laughs> you got to eat it slowly. Eat uh-huh. it all and eat it really slowly to yeah. really stretch out that last meal. Before you die. <laughs> yeah, for it. For it. Right. <laughs> Um, awesome. yeah, I liked, I like that list. I actually, my, um, my sister-in-law, Tasha, um, texted me this morning and she was like, she wanted to let us know that she is officially a, com- a convert despite okay. that she's on board with the ridiculous, um, just in time for us to take a break. But also she was telling me that they listened to our, ep- she listened to our episode last week and then she had her and, um, uh, my nephew Owen and my brother, all do their top five glimmers, and it was very oh, sweet. I know that it was very like, sweet. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, that's so great." I'm like, I don't think Max would ever concentrate enough to do that. He'd be like, I'm going to ask no. my kids that. I didn't yeah. even think to ask them, but I will. Yeah, it was very sweet, and they she yeah. sent me their lists, and it was. I was like, "Oh, I love this." Louise will just be like <laughs> Taylor Swift. Everything. Any Taylor Swift? Song. Yeah. <laughs> Which is perfect. That's perfect. I know. Um, all right. Well, you guys, we're going to miss you when we're gone. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful summer. And we will be back sometime in July. And we can't uh, – we're going to we're gonna have a wonderful summer. Yeah. We'll miss everybody, you. Every, we're all around the – across the board, everyone will have a wonderful summer. Uh-huh. And, yeah, and we're going to come back with lists that we've, like, read beforehand. <laughs> At least some. We'll like test. We'll test, test some it. lists. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're gonna be we're gonna be better, bigger, and better, and happier, and re- more rested. Yes, um, yes, for sure. But in the meantime, you can always get in touch with us. You can uh, find us on um, Instagram. We're at the Ridiculous Pod. We're on TikTok at the Ridiculous Podcast. Um, you know, feel free to go back and listen to old episodes, and then you know, give us a little like five star rating, maybe a review. We would love that. Yeah, I mean, it's weird how more reviews make us want to do more episodes. <laughs> it's weird how that happens. It's so it's weird. Like, it's like gasoline in a car, you know? <laughs> like reviews, five-star reviews. Gas yeah. us up. We need it. <laughs> we need some gas. We're running out. <laughs> Um, thank you guys so much for listening have a wonderful summer and we'll be back soon with more fun lists for you ridiculous ridiculous ridiculous